I was a stock M3 engine, I'd have 295 foot-pounds of torque, 414 horsepower, but uh, that's not good enough for the fire orange baby here. We need at least 400 torque and over 500 horsepower. So let's get some. 30 years ago, this engine would have been an Indy engine or a Formula One engine, and now it's a perfectly acceptable, drivable street engine that meets California emissions. One interesting thing, too, is that with this 4.6 liter V8, we're actually making more horsepower and more torque than the 5 liter V10 that was in the M6 and the M5s. But more importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to better our ratio of pounds per horsepower. Um, basically, every car is kind of measured by that, uh, how many pounds it has to haul around per horsepower. I think we're going to improve that ratio in our car quite a bit, which is going to improve our overall performance, not just in acceleration, but in braking and handling, because we're going to increase the power and decrease the weight, which is just as beneficial. We examined a lot of options that we had as far as like supercharging the car, turbocharging the cars, traditional ways that people try and get more power out of a, a BMW or an M car in specific. Although they're great and on paper, they look like they produce a lot of power. One of the advantages that we had to going with the stroker motor is that it has a much wider and smoother power band. The torque and horsepower come on at a later RPM, whereas on the stroker motor you'll have horsepower and torque that come in at a lower RPM and sustain through the RPM range. And when you're in the middle of a corner, say at the apex, you don't want the power to come on suddenly. You want it to be predictable and gradual. And that's the advantage we're getting with the stroker motors. We wind up with a very wide torque plateau, a nice smooth power curve. The stock motor in the car is a four liter with an 80, 8300 RPM red line. Um, the Dynan motor is a 4.6 liter. So what we've done is we've increased the stroke. The, the stock stroke was just a hair under, under three inches, and now it's just a hair over three inches. And also we've increased the bore of the cylinders by about, about four millimeters. Not an easy thing to do because these are not just simple cast iron cylinders. It's actually an aluminum silicon alloy that uh, requires not only for the cylinders to be bored, but then they have to be etched afterwards to expose the silicon. But we do have a proprietary forged billet crankshaft that's been put in there, new Cali's connecting rods, new pistons. Um, surprisingly though, we don't change the cams. We don't change the cams or a little bit on the cam timing but the stock cams work just fine because of the variable valve timing and the variable camshafts on the, on the car. We have increased the throttle bodies on the car. Those have been bored out. They've gone from 50 millimeters to 54 millimeters. When the engine is as heavily computerized as this engine is, software is very important. So you get an idea of why it's difficult to increase the size of this engine. It's not just something you can do at home in the driveway. Step on the brake. <laughs> Yeah, it lives.